If you're grinding to achieve your goals, whether it's running a marathon, running a business, or running your life, WIS gets you. WIS is a tax and accounting firm that goes beyond the numbers, and we're super pumped to be partnered with them. Looking to level up your business or career? Make it happen with WIS. That's W I S S dot com slash J W S. What's up, everybody? I'm Lynn Williams. And I'm Sam Mewis, and this is Stacks, where we talk about some personal stuff, some soccer stuff, some real stuff, and some fun stuff. So, Lynn, what's new since the last pod? Also, I decided I'm going to start calling the podcast The Poodle. And we're going to call this Poodle Casting. I decided that yesterday. Why? I don't know. It's just more fun. I like dogs. It's more fun to say I got to go do a little poodle. That sounds like something you shouldn't be well I thought of it alone and I didn't say it out loud but I still kind of like it okay fine we're poodle cast so we're what's poodling. new since the last poodle cast um <laughs> a lot right now we are straight off the plane from Louisville literally straight off the plane into our recording booths which also happen to just be our homes and um what about you what's new yeah, with you I mean same so I just wanted to give a, a little heads up to the audience we are living in wild times right now so this podcast might not follow our usual you know very structured and professional format of mm-hmm. of exactly how we lay it out at the beginning um we decided we needed to keep the egg reference going so this is going to be the scrambled egg podcast we are basically scrum, 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 just going to talk, talk about the Olympics roster, talk about what's going on with soccer. And then we have a little surprise guest coming on to debrief us on her Olympic experience. So we're very excited about that. But like you said, we just got off the plane from Louisville. Lynn scored two goals. I did it. Um, well, I had to make up for something after you played a beautiful cross to me and then I just shanked it off my head. So it, it's Lynn. It, it's okay. It happens. Sometimes we shank. Sometimes, sometimes we, we jank. Jank. But sometimes they go in and and great. lucky for me to win in. This is getting weird. Let's move yeah, on. I, um let's focus. <laughs> well but I did want no it's my turn to talk. Um I did want to say that the first goal, I told you this yesterday or this morning, but gave me um, 2016 semifinals in Portland vibes where you stole the ball off a throw in, their throw in, and played it perfectly to me. And I scored. I was like, deja vu. I had a little bit of deja vu as well. It was, it was awesome. And then no, we'll go back to your second goal. But even the game before, we had a, another little connection. I know. It's as if we um, are connecting onto the same page, probably because of this podcast. We're learning how to communicate and read each other. I think so. I think we should credit all of our success this past week to snacks. Yes. And then tell us about your, tell us about your second goal. Well, my second goal was with my head. I got a header goal. (laughs) I head butted it into the net. Um, well, nobody marked me on the corner and I said, Lynn, this is your time to shine. And, um, the ball was coming in. Carson delivered a great ball and I heard Kiwi that's Abby Ursig say, Lynn go. And if I have to take a header for Kiwi, who is the flying fish and really good at heading, I said, Lynn, you better score this. Kiwi is the flying fish. I've literally never heard that before. Oh, I made it up just now. (laughs) No, I've been saying it for weeks and she hates it. And I said, you're the flying salmon. And she's like, why? And I'm like, I don't know. You eat salmon all the time. And I don't know. And because you're flying through the air and you're flying through the air and cool. So but then it was your turn. Yeah. Well, when she said, Lynn, go, I was like, oh, like I can't mess this up. Um, and so I opened my eyes this time. And it's really amazing the things you can do when you had the ball with your eyes open. You heard it here first, everybody. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. the ball. Well, so the courage has had a good week so far. We have another game on Saturday. Yes. Um, so that's very around. exciting. Tight turnaround, but we're just doing recovery, recovery, recovery. Yeah, I, I'm actually pretty excited. I, I know three games in a week is like tough, but I really feel like it, it challenges you mentally. It challenges you physically. And the 
people that are able to be successful at that. Like, I feel like it's like, like such a growing moment for mm. three games. Um, remember when we had five games in like a short period of time, two weeks, two years yeah. ago. And I felt like we are just so up for it. Like the courage for some reason is like, yeah, we want three games in a week. Please nobody don't, don't get any ideas. So do that to us often. <laughs> but anytime we do it, it's always like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Um, embrace the challenge. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say, Sam. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I also just wanted to comment. I, the fans in Louisville were like pretty on it. I like, I yeah. was getting a lot of love in Louisville. I heard a lot of Sammy bananas, ch- <laughs> like, uh, called calls down to me. A lot of people saying good luck. It was really nice. And I nice. just wanted to give them a little shout out. It was like pretty great. Of course, it nobody, was- nobody could ever rival our fans here in North Carolina, but Louisville, no. you guys were pretty, pretty on it. Thank you. Yeah. It was actually pretty nice and sweet to have people cheering for you, even though you were the opposing side. Um, so thank you, Louisville. Yes. Louisville. Thank you. Shout out. <laughs> um, what else is new? Obviously the Olympics, the roster came out. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Um, but before we get to that, did anything else exciting happen? Yes, it did. It did. Lynn, um, <laughs> me and Christy, Christy and I, Christy and me, the Mewie wees. I don't know how I'm supposed to say that, even though I was an English major. Um, we made a beer with harpoon and it came out this week and, um, they did the canning. So we got to see like what it looked like in its final stages. And now it's getting shipped out, um, to, I think like 23 States. Um, it's available at the harpoon breweries. It's going to be available at like liquor stores. It's going to be available at like some bars and restaurants, hopefully. So you guys can go to harpoon their website and like do the beer finder and find where it's coming near you. Not all of it has been shipped out yet. So it might like take a few weeks, but basically we're really excited about it. Christy and I, and our family in general, like love beer. It's something that my family actually like does quite often as we'll go to like a local brewery and like try some beers. And I feel like when the four of us are all together, it's usually like a cause for celebration because it doesn't happen that often. So we like to celebrate by having a beer Um, and so this idea kind of like hatched a few years ago where we just, I don't know, maybe we had had a couple beers and we started (laughs) thinking, wouldn't it be awesome to like have our own brewery someday or like get into this business a little bit. And we've all like been doing some research and basically just reached out to Harpoon to see if they would be interested in trying to make a beer with us. And they were, which was Mm -hmm. like, so cool. Harpoon is, um, there's a brewery in Boston and one in Vermont. And so it's like big in new England, but obviously they have a presence like all over the country. Um, so we like worked with them in this really like creative and collaborative process to come up with a citrus IPA. That's like a little bit of lemon, lime, and sea salt. It's very summery. Mm -hmm. We think it's going to appeal to like a wide array of beer drinkers. I don't know if you're going to like it, Lynn. You don't know what I like. I do know that you don't love beer, but I think this one's a special occasion. So I think you could probably try it. Yeah, I definitely, I don't drink beer often, but when I do, it's going to be because you made it and I'm going to have a glass and I'm going to probably make this, well, you can't see my face because this is audio, but if this ever gets on YouTube, my face is going to be like this the whole time, but maybe this will be my transition beer to liking beers. Maybe it will. I wouldn't be too surprised. It's we, we have had so much fun doing it. It really is very good. We're really excited about it. I actually got to go to the brewery when I was home, um, in May and like pour some of the hops in the big container and then pull out some of the, I don't know, barley or something. Was there anything about, was there anything about the process that was like, shocking to you that you were like oh my gosh I did not know that happened well not like shocking I actually think that because I'm interested in this I Pat and Christy got Pat and I a Christmas present one time to go somewhere and brew our own beer Mm -hmm. one other time that was just like a a for fun thing so I did like know a little bit about it but at one point I was looking in this big vat and it looked like oatmeal yuck and it was like hot and I was kind of like this is not but what that makes, beer is like, <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Cause like wheat, oatmeal. Yeah. Oats. Sure. Yeah. Totally. Uh, 
I like, I, that's so exciting. I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to like have a can and just shrine it and be like, my friend made this. Um, I so badly wish I liked beer because I like the idea of liking beer. Yeah. So may, maybe this, I feel like I lost some fans saying I don't like beer. I'm so sorry. But well, what, what do you like? I like ciders. I, you know what? I'm a really good friend though, when it comes to like drinking driving. games. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say driving. <laughs> no, like, I will not like be driving. Lynn, I think Lynn would take one for the team and drive. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I would not. <laughs> you would not take one for the team and be the designated driver. No. Well, I'll get us an Uber. Okay, I want to be a works. part of the fun. That works. That works. Um, but I mean, like if we were playing drinking games and there was beer involved, I wouldn't not drink the beer, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it, but I like, I'm taking one for the team. I'll do that. I'm not driving okay. us. <laughs> good. To, this is so good to know that Lynn will take a lot for the team, but not the DD role. No, no, that's but that's not, okay. That's not Uber, the role I want. Uber exists. For yeah. a reason. <laughs> We're taking us. Okay. Places. Well, well, that was the beer segment of snacks. But that's so exciting. Anyways. Yeah, it is very exciting. Thank you so much. So, do we want to talk about the Olympics now? Yeah. Let's talk about it. First Amazing. of all, congratulations. Thank you, Lynn. Congratulations to you too. Thank you. We are going to Tokyo. We are going to Tokyo. Have it you ever is- been? I actually have. I've been for the U20 World Cup in Whoa. 2012. Whoa. Yeah. And we Full actually circle. won. I know it was really funny. I, Steve Swanson, who was the coach of that team, texted me and said, time to bring home another medal from Japan. And I was like, oh my God, that's kind of cool. That is amazing. That's actually very cool. Um, yeah. I- so I think it's, it's definitely going to be a, a much different experience than that was because it's, I mean, nine years later, COVID Olympics, full team, a lot, a lot of differences, but still exciting to be going back. Yeah. Well, it should be very exciting. I am so excited for you to watch you support you. If my name is called be there with you even more, Yep. but I'm, I'm so excited um, for you. I, so me and Sam decided, like she said, this, this podcast is going to be run a little differently. So we felt like it would be really cool to interview each other, do a little interview style about the Olympics. Obviously we're both in a little bit of a different position, even though we're both going. So, um, I feel like I can learn from Sam in the fact that she was an alternate before. Um, and so we're just going to be each other's brains. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I guess I can interview you first. Okay. If that's okay. I'm ready. Okay, Lynn. Hi, this is Sam Mewis. I'm from Snacks Podcast. And I just wanted to ask you a few questions today about um, your upcoming Olympic journey. Oh my God. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Go. Um, okay. So you just got named as an alternate. Obviously yes. you would love to be in the, in the 18, but you are in yeah. the top 22. So just give us how you felt when you first found out. Um, yeah. So when I first found out, I good news, bad news. I just needed to know. I felt like I was so anxious. Um, I feel like the side of sports that people don't get to see is how anxious we get sometimes and how much stress takes a toll on us. And so that day, um, I knew we would probably be getting a call and, Gladco texted me at two to see if I could talk. And I hadn't eaten all day. Like I actually felt and was physically ill. And I was like, I just need to know, I need to like have an answer by now. And so he said, do you have time to talk today? And I said, yes, I have time all day. And he said, okay, I'll talk, I'll call you in a few minutes. And in my head, I was like, the sooner, the better, sir. Um, and so <laughs> when he called me, um, he said, we want you to be um, a part of our delegation obviously as an alternate and you know obviously a little bit disappointed um but I think after the call we had a very good talk um and I'm very grateful to be continuing on and going to Japan and and training with everybody Um, but I think when you take a step back and I've I took myself a day to like feel all of the feels I think that sometimes 
we forget to allow ourselves to be a little bit sad. We, when we keep like, or just like, we got to move on, we got to keep pushing forward. And so I let myself be a little bit sad. Um, but then I realized I was like, you know what, I'm still going. I'm so grateful. Um, I am so honored to be able to help the 18 get ready. Um, we have an uh, Olympics to win. So I'm so grateful to do that. And, um, I'm going to stay ready. So if my name is called, then, then I'm going to hopefully be the best Lynn I could possibly be, but, but yeah, definitely a little bit disappointed. Um, but then again, I'm like, how grateful and how blessed am I to even have the ability to be stressed? Cause we're talking about the Olympics. Like mm -hmm. I didn't go to the world cup and now I fought to get back on the team. And so for that, I should be proud of myself. So I am, I was, I was sad and now I'm proud. Well, great, Lynn. That's like incredible. I'm glad that you took time to like feel all of your emotions. And I'm sure like, well, I, I'm not sure. I, I know for a fact that like more emotions and more ups and downs are coming. Oh yeah. Um, but just know that like the team is there for you and it is like a challenging experience, but mm -hmm. like also I think in the long run, very rewarding and oh yeah, well, I'm sure that we'll get to this, but like, I think that my experience being an alternate has led me here and I learned mm -hmm. so much from it. Um, especially like, this is, a, this is not my turn to talk, but now that I'm, on, I'm just gonna yeah. say it. <laughs> I think especially that I, at the time I had been so focused on myself and my performance that I like had to have this time to realize what, what am I doing for the team and mm -hmm. being an alternate, it was exactly that. It was like, what can I do to help the other midfielders? What can I do to help the forwards? What can I do to be playing as the opponent? How am I going to help the team perform? Mm -hmm. Um, and that has kind of like stuck with me. I think that idea that my actions are going to help the team and the idea that I can play a role in support for everybody else. And I think when you're trying so hard to make a roster, it's easy to forget that. Not that anybody has, but it's easy to forget it because your performance is what matters so much. Um, yeah. but having to go through the experience of being in a supportive role just has stuck with me in the sense that now I know I can support everybody all the time. And that actually, yeah. I think makes me better. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that, um, like this, obviously I haven't gone through experience yet, but this one makes me hungrier to like get there. I think it like lights a fire under you and says like, I don't ever want to be on this bubble in this position again. So like, what do I have to do to get there? Now you're going to have to hold me to this because we got a, a bit to go, but, <laughs> um, but also like, I think to that point, exactly. Like everybody's so focused on themselves and fighting to make this, the, the 18 in the spots. And when finally you it's announced right now, my brain is okay. Like I have given, I've been given my role. So now I need to play that role. Like mm -hmm. at this moment, it's not about you anymore, or it really wasn't about me in the beginning or individual in the beginning, but you kind of feel that way. Cause you're trying to make these spots, but now like that you have your role, it's not about you. It's about the, the team and like, what can you do? What can every single person do in their role to get everybody across the line to get that gold medal? So, um, so yeah, obviously a little disappointed, but like, I'm still so excited. Like I, I can't wait to go. I can't wait to train with everybody. I can't wait to like, whatever people want me to do, I'll be doing it. I'm the girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to know. Um, on that note, like what positive things are you looking forward to, or like maybe thinking will come from it? Like, what are you excited about? Yeah, I think there's something to say about like just getting the experience of it, um, taking everything, you know, obviously this Olympics is a little bit different because of COVID. Um, but still like the, um, the intensity of every single game. I think that I've been named to rosters, but never a huge roster like this. So seeing what, how every single game matters, um, mm -hmm. and you can't just say, okay, we'll learn from this and move on. Like, no, you have to win the game. Um, so I think getting that experience, um, watching how people just, um, conduct themselves and go about their business. Um, I'm excited to continue to train and get better as well at the same time. Um, I think the thing that's a little bit tricky, and I'm sure you know this too, is as an alternate, you're not going to be playing in the games there, but I'm also, people are going to be playing games here as well. So making sure that I'm staying sharp and like visualizing games and making sure that when 
the time comes for me to play a game again, I'm ready to go. Um, so I think that's going to be a little bit of challenge, but I'm like actually excited for that challenge. Yeah. Um, and I'm also excited to just go to Tokyo. I mean, I've never been. I know that's like so <laughs> cool. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, I think like you'll be fully embedded with the team too. So yeah, you will gain so much experience from it. But I like what you said about like continuing to visualize playing in games, because as soon as you get back here at the end of the is, is happening and yeah. we've got to be ready for that too. I know it's, I, I think sometimes we um, underestimate how hard it is to go back and forth between NWSL and national team um, and being able to just like switch them off, which I, that's like, so not human nature at all. Um, but I'm so excited. Like, I can't wait. Got my luggage today. Um, oh, I gotta go you- check my package room. I know. Got some luggage. Um, got to get some new cleats, making sure everything's all set to go. Yep. Um, um I, do, I have one more question for you. Is there anything that like anybody in your inner circle, like your parents or Marley or your sister said to you when you told them that you were an alternate that like has stuck with you so far? Um, trying to think, well, everybody just keeps saying, stay ready, like stay ready. Um, make sure that like you're supporting everybody, but stay ready more of, they're just so proud of me. Um, Mm -hmm. I think they have known how hard it has been for me to get to this point and kind of my whole career in general, I feel like I have had to fight to prove my, my belonging through my whole career. Um, and being away for a year and a half and then coming back and even making it back was an accomplishment. And so in their eyes, they're like, you're an Olympian. And I'm like, not yet, but, <laughs> but thank you. Um, but they're just so proud of me. And, and I think that's all you could ever want from your family um, and your support system is to make them proud. So um, they know that I, I want to be on the 18 and hopefully one day that happens. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm proud of myself. They're proud of me. And that I think that's what's stuck with me the most. It's not like one thing though. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I'm you're you and me both are so lucky to have such great support systems. Yeah. No and I'm proud. I'm proud of you too. Oh my gosh. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's switch gears where I interview you. Okay. Samantha, Sammy Bonetta's Mewis. Welcome to the podcast. Howdy. <laughs> Ew. Ew. <laughs> Okay. So you are an Olympian officially. Tell me how, how did you feel when you first found out what was it like? Yeah. Well, I was confident in, in like what I had done to make it. Um, and so I think that I was waiting to hear from black hole because I like, couldn't believe it until I really heard Um, I think that I've had like kind of a soft spot about the Olympics for five years because I was in your, your position last time and came so close to making it, but just quite didn't. Um, and I think that while I totally like understood that decision and agreed with it, um, and that the alternate role was like definitely what was best for me and what was best for the team at the time, I have just been like, I've had my sights set on this now for, for five years and then the fact that it got delayed that extra year just kind of made it seem like I had to like wait even longer. Um, so I was just like really looking forward to, um, to hearing for sure from black co and, and, and like having him tell me that he wanted me to be part of the 18. And when that happened, I had this moment of like, okay, I like, it's been five years. I, I feel like I earned it. Hi, Finny. I know. Thank He's saying, you. you earned it, mama. Thank you so I'm so much. proud of you. I feel like I earned it. And I, I was just like really proud to, um, to get the phone call. Um, and obviously like honored. I think one of the things I like, I don't think any of us talk about like enough is that it's, it's representing the, the team is like where this huge honor comes in, because I feel like what the U S women's national team stands for and what it represents is like, it's everything that we fight for all the time. It's Mm -hmm. like all these women who have come before us, it's being role models for young girls. It's not always about like this, like patriotism, but it's about like what the team is. And the reason why I'm so honored is because of the women around me. Um, 
And there, of course, there are moments, I mean, this is the Olympics. There is a lot of patriotism involved, but it's the fact that like, I have so much respect for my teammates and the women standing next to me that seeing that I like belong there with them is such an incredible like realization. Um, so I think like, that's what makes it mean so much. And I, I feel like I've never really like, like gotten through that before, like in a, like publicly, I've never like explained why the team means so much to me. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was really excited when I heard from Blacko. I had like one little moment. I was still home here in the morning with Pat and Finn. And I had one little moment. I like got a little, a few tears in my eyes. Um, I like went and gave Pat and Finn a hug and was like, really just like took a second for myself and then went off to practice. Um, but it felt really good to, to hear it. And obviously it was a long road and, um, I'm just like honored to, like I said, be standing next to so many incredible women. Do you feel like it was a different feeling? Sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. A different, <clears throat> a different feeling than when you got the call for the World Cup. Um, it was, yeah. I mean, it was a little bit. Like, I think that it's hard to say. I just think that, like, the Olympics has been this, like, little, yeah thorn in my brain for five years. And I feel like at the world cup, it's like, I, it was, it was wonderful. Like getting the phone call meant so much to me. I'll never forget it. Um, but at the same time, like, I'll never forget the phone call in 2016 when I didn't make it Yeah, either. Um, so I just think that like, it's a smaller roster and, um, just the fact that I didn't make it last time, like made it a little bit more special to me. So I feel like, yeah, it was like a, a little bit of a different feeling. Yeah. You like got to, um, like right a wrong almost. Yeah. Like I got to like prove to myself, like, okay, yeah. this, this was something you couldn't do before. And now you can. Yeah. Um, how, I mean, obviously you weren't at an Olympics before, but you were at a, like a huge tournament what do you think this, this world, I'm sorry, this Olympics will mean to you now that your sister is also going? Oh my God. I know. Um, it, I mean, that was like the only thing I could think about when, after I heard about myself, I was like, okay, Christy's getting called soon too. Like, yeah. Imagine if we both get to go, it's like the only I thing know. that could make this better. Um, sorry. That's Finn. He's also um, excited. He's also excited. He's like, mom and auntie are going. <laughs> um so I mean I'm just so proud of Christy I mean she's like been through a lot the last couple of years and been in and out of the team um I think she set a record for days since she like played and scored for the national team and then did it again it was like so many days apart um she tore her ACL she got traded a bunch of times I think she really like recommitted herself to her career which mm-hmm. has been like cool for me to see as her sister Um, and then to just see her like prove herself as a consistent and reliable player who can change the game when she plays, I, as a teammate wanted her to make it because I believe in her and I trust her on the field. And as her sister, of course, I wanted her to make it because it's just so cool. Um, so I think it's like really interesting having both of those roles now. Um, but a lot of fun and something that obviously like my parents and our family is like, just kind of have an absolute ball. Like I know you like literally <laughs> you couldn't write a better story than like the Mewies, the Mewy sister. But, um, I also just, I think that people, I mean, everybody has a story of ups and downs and like craziness. I think that like you think, your career is going to just go up, 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 but we have like so many, but I really think Christy is somebody that younger people can look to and say, like, even if you have a down, like you can get yourself out of the down. And, Definitely. and I think that like, that's such a beautiful story. I know everybody talks about it, but like, I really do think that younger people going through a hard time, like sometimes you feel in that moment, like this is the worst thing ever. And I'm never going to be the same again. And like, this is the best I have now. And I think looking at Christy, she, she was like, no, um, I think for a second she settled and then I I don't know what it was. We 
maybe one day we'll have her on here. Who knows? And we can ask her, but <laughs> <Let's hope. laughs> Let's, we've tried and the schedules have been messed up, but, um, but yeah, um, just seeing that she, I don't know what it was, but was like, you know what? I'm going to be better. I'm so much better than this. And she is, she's an incredible soccer player. And uh, yeah. I'm just so excited for you guys. Thank you so much. I think with Christy, it was, it's like a story of resilience and of almost like having to admit to yourself what you want. I think yeah. I've seen yeah. sometimes with myself and with friends and teammates, sometimes we don't let ourselves want it, or we don't admit that's what we want. And until you do, and until you like walk out on that limb and say, I mm-hmm. want to be this good. Um, you are kind of like holding yourself back a little bit. And so I think, I mean, I'll speaking for Christy at uh, this part, but I do think she went through that a little bit and saying it's safe to just not admit wanting to get back yeah. on the team. And it's scary to say, no, that's what I want. That's my goal. And I'm doing everything for that. But as soon as you admit it, and as soon as you like put everything into it, I think it opens up new doors for you. And as we saw with Christy, like she's just playing lights out and yeah, well, the like Olympics. you, I think it's like, we don't talk about this like self-sabotage situation that a lot of people do. I know I've done it. Um, and now I'm seeking help. Thank God. But, (laughs) but but it's true. Like you, you have these goals and these dreams and it starts to happen for you. And then you'll kind of do things to make sure, um, like subconsciously you're doing things to make sure it doesn't happen because if, if you don't make it, then it's easy for you to say, well, I didn't give it my all. And so of course I didn't make it, but if you give it your all and you still don't make it, that's like the hardest part. And I think it's just incredible that Chrissy was able to do it. Um, I'm so excited for you guys. I can't wait to help support you guys and watch you win an Olympic gold medal. Oh, well, then you're going to be, you are going to be a part of it. And we are, I know. Oh, well, Um, yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, I think we should take a break and get our guests on here. So do I. In the wise words of Beyonce, don't try to lessen yourself for the world. Let the world catch up to you. True leaders know that to be successful, you have to set the pace and run your own race, sometimes before an empty stadium. WIS is a modern day tax accounting firm that cheers on the underdog. They're the coach you need by your side to support all your business needs. Whether you're looking to scale your business, sell your business, or you just have questions, WIS is your one-stop financial expert. They're also into tech, entrepreneurship, and well, Beyonce. Expect the unexpected at WIS. That's W-I-S-S dot com slash J-W-S. And now, this is this week's guest. Please welcome Emily Sauna. Surprise. Welcome. Pat, Pat could you grab Finn? Jeez. Welcome, <laughs> Sauce. Welcome, Saucy Sonnet, to the show. <laughs> Lean Sam. How are you guys? Finn, get him a treat. I know. Get I, him I a can't. treat. I'm stuck in my podcast booth. Pat. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I know. It's chaos. Is Pat there? This, yeah, I, maybe he was outside. Fake? Is that fake? <laughs> yeah, right? He doesn't even exist. <laughs> <laughs> this this podcast has been we've been calling it the scrambled egg podcast because it has no structure whatsoever um none but basically we wanted you to come on here so we could talk to you about the olympics a little bit so congratulations Thank you're you. an olympian uh, and that's well, I'm, again clapping well i guess not until we get there right so i keep i keep thinking yeah okay let's well, get there Good, good juju into the air sauce. Thanks, Aline. <laughs> Just take my congratulations <laughs> and move on. Like, I don't know why you had to shut that down. No, I think I thought I did accept it. Thank you so much, Lynn. You're welcome. Um, Sam is frazzled because I, we- <laughs> I just, I'm going to go on mute for a second and figure this out. So Lynn, can you ask Sonnet our first Olympics question? No, me and me and Sonnet will maybe talk about her nickname sauce. And how she's giving me, if she makes money off of it, all the royalties. Um, I will say sauce did come from Lynn. And that's where I started calling her lean. And it was sauce and lean. I think we were roommates one year. Yeah, we uh, were. Hold on, Rich, sorry. I'm doing a, I'm doing a, a call. <laughs> Is Sonnet the most important person in the world? Probably. Uh, 
Okay. And our guest has left. <laughs> Sonnet muted us and left, but I'll tell a little bit of the backstory. Sonnet and I were alternates together at the last Olympics with Heather <laughs> O'Reilly. Sorry, this Ashlyn. is funny because you just jumped into a whole different subject. We were talking about sauce and lean, and then you just moved on to a backstory about alternates. I'm sorry, I panicked. She left the screen. Okay, we're back. Um, Sauce and lean. I'm sauce. That's lean. Lean and gave that- me sauce. And I make no money off it. <laughs> I make I? no money. Off- but we will. You're Sammy Bananas. Okay. You're nothing. <laughs> yeah, you're Sammy Bananas. Sammy. Uh, um, uh, yeah, so that's, I guess that's how it goes. And then I did, they, did, they did the roster announcement. And then I guess it's kind of cool. Ted Lasso called called me Emily Sauce, Saucy Sonnet. And yeah, I you, guess, you literally yeah, and got the you. longest. Um, it stuck. You got the longest spiel from Ted Lasso I've ever heard. <laughs> Do you think? Wasn't that you? I kind of felt good. It was I awesome. Think, I, I think that was me. Rose, Rose got a long one too. I think Rose, they said she was like a scented candle or something. Oh yeah, I thought that, that was, was funny. really funny. Well, even the sisters thing about how they were like, uh, it's it's uh, disruptive to the team to have sisters on the team because they read each other's mind. But you know, I guess it's cool as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he, yeah, he was, he was like the playing games. They read each other's minds. Like it's not fair. I, I was like, I was like, that's that's a really good point. <laughs> I know that was really funny. Okay, saucy and lean. Are we safe to move on to Olympics questions? Yes, banana head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to my backstory. Maybe we can cut that part out from before. Back to the backstory. Sonnet and I were alternates together in 2016, along with Heyo and Ashlyn. Sonnet, I've already talked a little bit about my experience earlier. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, like, what was it like being an alternate? Do you have any funny stories you want to tell about it? What did you learn? Uh, what was it like to be an alternate? I think I was honored to go to, to the Olympics be part of the group. Um, uh, I remember being, I remember being called saying, oh, you're an alternate. I was like, oh, it's going to be great. I'll get, um, my first tournament experience uh, with the senior national team. Um, it wasn't what I thought, um, but then I think very quickly I had to get on like, oh, this is my role. What do I need to do for the team? I'm the extra body, um, whatever. It was really nice having Sam. Um, so we roomed the whole time. Did you want to talk about that? No, I didn't, no, but that talk was, about that it. was, I mean, that, that was special <laughs> in itself. <laughs> um, we watched the, a lot of Netflix together. Um, you guys didn't really snatched. know each other, but at this no. time, well, uh, we weren't best friends like we are now. Yeah, I, this was like we were still like kind of figuring each other out. Yes. Um, <laughs> Sam and I are very different, and we found that out, I think, kind of quickly. Yeah, um, because I feel like we were always like only one minute early to things, and I, that's kind of get way too close for me. <laughs> that's so I'd be perfect for me. I'd be like waiting at the door, like all ready to go and looking at Sonnet, like Sonnet, we have to go. And she'd be like, oh, I just didn't find my headphones. It's all good. <laughs> We're cool. We got time. Or like, or like, or like you had to have this like um, lanyard on the whole like time. Credential. Like, yeah. And I like never knew where my credential was. And I was always like <laughs> juggling, like, like, e- like juggling everything in my hands without my credential. And then Sam was just like, I got to leave you. And I'd be like sprinting down the hallway, like trying to get to the, trying to get to the elevator just in time. But Sam, yeah, do you think um, a prerequisite to being your friend is almost making you late or something? <laughs> I mean, it, it might be. It honestly, like, might be. Like, maybe I seek you guys out because Rose is like this too. Like, I was waiting for Rose in the lobby of our apartment in Manchester for probably three hours total. Like, I would just wait down there for her every Why? day. I don't know, because she's just cut like Sonnet. I get there five minutes early. She gets there one minute late. Just living life on the edge. We're just, we're, I think we're just leveling each other out. It's constant this. It's like, a balance. That's. This is also your height, and this is. <laughs> if, if anybody wanted to know, Sonnet looks like a balance theme. Because a this tipping is, scales. A scales. This is audio. <laughs> just I'm, t- I'm tipping scales. Um, and Sam and I. And everyone else in her life were just trying to even her out. Yeah. Even me out. Even me out. Well, what did, so what did you learn? Like, what have you taken from your experience that has now got you here? Mm. 
what have I taken? Um, I think I actually, I'm, I was thinking about this the other day and I was kind of like how the, how an actual tournament works and like the rest and the recovery in between had no idea how important that was clearly mm-hmm. very important. We play what every 72 three hours, yeah, three days. Um, I think just seeing that and seeing the dedication of everyone, because having 18 bodies, it really isn't a lot. Um, and I just, I, that's the one thing I like vividly, like remember like everyone, like doing the Norma Tech legs, doing, you know, the ice baths, doing, and like that, the recovery takes up almost all your time. That's like the one like big thing that I remember. I asked Sam the same question. So you obviously made the world cup roster. So this isn't your first major roster that you've, you've been a part of, but do you feel like because you were an alternate last time for the Olympics and now you're on this roster, there's like a, I, I don't know how to ask this question without like literally putting my input into your answer. But um, like, do you feel like it's, it's like, it means more because you didn't make it at first or. I think a little bit, I think I've always kind of kept that as motivation, but not in like, I almost, it was almost like, I don't want this to ever happen again to me. Mm. And like, what did I miss out on? What were like the, maybe the small marginal things that I could have done better that I did for the last four years to kind of like climb this way. And it's not going to be like this. It's like gradual. Um, But I think it does, it does, I does feel a little bit more rewarding side. You kind of have to go through the being part of the team, but you're not kind of on the team. Yeah. Definitely. It's the best way. To, I mean, that's the best way to put it. And then I guess you have to kind of wait. I waited four years, I guess, what, five years. And then, so it does feel, it does feel, uh, it does feel good. It's not, you know, obviously not the first tournament, but I think not making the Olympics last time, and like maybe barely uh, missing out and then making it now, it does feel, it does feel good, I guess. That's really similar to what I said. So yeah. I was like, I think getting this phone call, like was a little bit different than getting the world cup phone call. I felt like it's not like better, but it's like, I just had this little bit of like a, a box that was unchecked in like my life. And it was the Olympics. And now as long, I mean, I feel like making the roster officially feels like I'm starting to check the box, even though now I'm, I, I want to get there and go and go and win. <laughs> and you know yeah. how Sam is about those check boxes. Yeah. She has to check them all. Has Her list, all of them to do lists, list, grocery lists, Relax list. All the lists. Relax. The relax list is a list I want to see. <laughs> Brushed my teeth this morning. Check. Check. She, I think you wrote a list for making a list. You were like, make a list on your list. So that's a little bit into it's always good, mine. It's always good to check something off right away. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, okay, Sonnet, a couple more things. What do you remember like, tell me, tell us your favorite story from Brazil from 2016. I have like three or four in mind. Okay. I have one, I have uh, one immediately into my mind. Yeah. Um, the alternates. So it's you, me, hey, this is, the, I'm going to call it the Zumba story. Yeah. Zumba yeah. in the streets. Yeah. That's on um, my list. Is that on your list? Yeah, that was literally like that was literally like the best. Like it was. I wrote dancing. In, I wrote dancing in the street story. <laughs> yeah, Zumba in the street story. <laughs> that was really. It was really like the best thing. And we went to we went to the gym, and we we walked up rocked up to the gym. It was like Pino, you, me. I think there's a picture of us dancing. Yeah. Um, who else? Heyo and Ashlyn. Yeah, and there was just like bumping music outside the gym. They blocked up the whole street. We're like, what's going on? And they're just they're doing Zumba. And I'm like, we're like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Maybe they'll still be there after our lift. So I'm pretty sure we lifted, we were chained to a treadmill with Hayo exhausted. Yep. And we go out, they're still bumping. And I go, we're going to go dance. And we literally were there dancing Zumba, Brazilian style dances. Were we good? Yeah. Probably not. No, <laughs> but it, I remember, I think it was just so fun because it was like this moment of like unplanned freedom and joy when I felt like we were very, we were trying so hard to be like the right, the right, uh, like giving off the right vibes all the time. Like we got you guys professional. We're going to go to the gym. We're going to do our job. We're going to do our fitness and we're here for you. Like we had to be this like very specific like role and give off the right energy all the time. And then suddenly we had this, 
I think that's why it was like so memorable is because it was this moment of like freedom to just be like, oh, you could just dance in the street. Well, yeah, we were like detached from the team a little bit because we had to go lift. Yeah. And they were at the hotel and it was kind of like, oh, we like, look at this fun that's happening. Like we're yeah. absolutely like, it's like our only, ch- like we're doing it. Yeah. Get in here. We're, going. we're doing it. And I'm I remember sure, like, Pito was like, yeah, everyone was just like, we're just like <laughs> fist bumping. Like we didn't even do the Zumba dances. We were just like this. Literally like, oh. And I remember Dawn was kind of like, don't, Dawn was our uh, sports scientist and she was kind of like, don't like tell anybody about this. But like, if we didn't like do a Zumba class. We were probably there for five or 10 minutes. But it, again, it was just this moment of like fun that I feel like we all just needed to like release a little bit. It was like joining the block party. Like we were just yeah. like blocked off street. I was like, where's the frozen popsicles? Like where, like, like, let's see if we're going to do it. Let's I know. Do it, right? it was awesome. It was so much fun. Um, one other story on my list was the story about the phones. So they gave us these like new, (laughs) I think they were just like new phones that they had like pre-programmed that we could use international minutes and texting on. And they were supposed to take really good pictures. Like like Facebook chat. Like they just had, yeah, you you could use like a few apps to like communicate freely. Yeah. I think it was like either from the Olympics themselves or from you. I don't know who it was from, but they gave the whole team these new phones And so I'm all eager. Like when I get free stuff, you guys, I love it. I live for free stuff. So I'm kind of like everyone. uh, Yeah. I mean, (laughs) who doesn't like free stuff? Exactly. So I'm the first one to open the phone. I'm trying to get it to work and everybody else is too busy. Like nobody else has tried anything yet. And I'm like, how do you get the SIM card in? I'm jamming the SIM card in. I'm trying to sort out the phone. Naturally, I jam the SIM card in sideways. It's stuck. We can't get it out with tweezers. We can't get it out with anything. So I now my being like, I remember being like, I like had mine. I go, oh, Sam's my, mine's like working. Like I didn't have yeah. to put the SIM card in. And no. you were like, what? And then you, you didn't like- have to do anything. <laughs> you didn't have to do anything to this working phone. And naturally I jammed a SIM card in sideways and broke it on the first day. Um, do you remember you like got like paper clips and you were like undoing the paper clips trying yeah. to like go in try to like finagle maybe like loosen it and I think yeah. you like might have like you were like I just jammed it more you kept yeah. saying jam you're like I just jammed it <laughs> all I wanted was this phone to take pictures like all I wanted was to access the free stuff I had I wasn't asking for much and I of course ruined it immediately and it was just so disappointing it was so it was just disappointing I do Amanda. remember I do remember one more, and this is like very like, this is like a small story. It, I think you and I, we were obviously sharing a room and like, maybe you just like weren't having a great day. I don't know. And I like, just like <laughs> put like a Snickers underneath, like in your I remember face. that. <laughs> and I was like, I needed it. Like, well, like, it, no, but I feel like it was like a silly prank. And I feel like you kind of looked at it. You're kind of like, Ugh. and then like, you like took it and like, you like ate it. And I was just like, yeah, she needed that. <laughs> I needed that so much. I think I was like touched. I think I saw it and I was like, oh, she knew I needed a little piece of a Snickers. Like, where did I get the Snickers from? I don't know. But I like, I remember I like put it in this pillowcase. So it's like, as if you were like going to bed and you'd be like, what is this? And then be like, yeah, Snickers. Sonnet's, Sonnet has like a tough exterior sometimes. So it's hard to know if she actually like loves you. But when she does things like that, you, ju- you just know. <laughs> yes, no, I guess. I guess. <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, okay. Well, Sonnet, we are so grateful that you came on the show. We are going to do a little fun question section. You're welcome to stay probably like 10 more minutes. You're also welcome to go meet the Congressman up to you. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go because he knocked on the door and that's why I left <laughs> earlier. Yeah. She uh-huh. literally ditched the podcast. <laughs> so like, I think I need to go up there and just get like a, a speech to Congress. Yeah, uh, yeah they have a, yeah, they, they, they have to mic me up and everything when I yeah. go up there. So this yeah. is, okay. You, so on it, well, thank you so much for that. Sam, stop cutting me off all the time. I know, I know. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. Um, we needed you actually. So we oh really gosh. appreciate you coming on our scrambled egg podcast. You know what? I love scrambled eggs. I love you too. And I loved being here. Oh, that was really sweet. Thank you, Sonnet. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. All right. Well, this is my favorite part of the podcast where we just pepper each other with random questions. 
Samantha, now that Sonnet's gone, we can have fun. I'm just kidding. Sonnet, we love you. <laughs> um, okay. What is your favorite Olympic sport to watch besides soccer? Probably gymnastics. Not um, gymnastics. Oh my God. This is literally the eggs stick it podcast. Yeah. People are, people are just going to be like, I, I don't need to listen to this podcast anymore because all they talk about is eggs and stick it. That's it's literally, I hate eggs and stick it isn't even my favorite movie. I don't know why <laughs> we keep talking about them. <laughs> oh, um, probably gymnastics. I think it's just probably everybody's favorite sport to watch. It's wild. Yeah. What's yours? Um, I love gymnastics and I love track and field. Well, the next question is, do you think you could compete in another no. sport? Yeah, huh? you could do track and field. Maybe back in the day, if I like worked on my form, lost a couple pounds and like was really dedicated, but like not now those girls are fast. Like I'm fast and they're like fast, fast, fast. fast. They're like fast, fast. Okay. Well, I think that I could probably do gymnastics. Uh, <laughs> okay. If you, if you had to do one event, what do you think that like you could actually like in gymnastics? gymnastics? Yeah. Like which one do you think you could actually do? And by actually, I mean like not hurt yourself doing, I, I, I could stand up on a balance beam for a couple minutes, but I couldn't do anything on it. <laughs> do, you, do you think you could like spin around or do like, no, a... what about I'm, a I'm almost, I'm wondering if like I could do a vault. I think if I, I think I could probably do a vault. <laughs> I would love to watch you run full speed at the vault thing and then try to flip yourself into the air. Do they get to land in a pit? Yeah, we'll get a foam pit out for you. Yeah. Like, what What are you doing? I don't you, know like- what possesses me to think I could do a vault. Are you, like, jumping off of it with your feet? Are you, like, pushing off of it with your hands? I think I'm going to do a round off, land okay. on my feet. Wait. Oh my gosh. There's how a little, do the, how do you do the vaults again? <laughs> There's a little like trampoline in the front and you and bounce you push off with your hands. Yeah. And then, and then no. you push off the vault. No, you jump onto the trampoline with your feet and you push off the vault with your hands. Well, I don't, I think you can do multiple things, but that's what I watched. And then Simone you do, do flips and then you flip in the air a lot. Yeah. I mean, gymnastics was like a total joke. Like I'm way too tall. And obviously have no upper body strength. Well, yes, you do. I could do a pull up. Yeah. You're really sure. But not like a, not like a ring pull up. Well, no. Well, no. <laughs> Same. I mean, yeah, I, I can't, I'm not going to be good at gymnastics. I do think maybe, uh, I could do like, a. Like, uh, like, like what's it though? The bob sledding one bit it out. <laughs> like, like, didn't it? Haven't you heard that? Haven't you heard that you could maybe like transition to do, bob? you know what else I think I could maybe get into someday would be cycling. Okay. I've got those long pendulum legs and those big quads. Yeah. Same. I mean, it would take a lot of work, but like, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. In I can another see that. life in another life. I if don't know you, if you could go back in time and. Maybe I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything, but I I think it could, could have been possible at some point to be a cyclist. I don't know about the Olympics. I wish I could play tennis that going to the next question. Do you think you can compete in another sport? I, I don't know, but I want to try tennis. Tennis is fun. Love tennis. Yeah. I think my career is over now since I broke my elbow and it's never going to be the same, but maybe I could have done that. Yeah, I could see that one. We could play doubles. Yeah. You'll get everything in the front because it can't get over your head because you're so large. Perfect. And Thank I'll just you. be sprinting around the back. They... <laughs> Great team. I mean, it's never too late, except for your elbow. Situation. Except, yeah, exactly. Um, do you have any Olympic memories from when you were a kid that like are special, like the Olympics seem special to you? Um, I am trying to think. Um, I remember when I was little, I, this is like, isn't even about the competing side, but like we took pictures with like the Olympic rings. Yeah. Um, I also, this is another thing. Like I 
used to compete at the junior Olympics with in track. Yeah. So that was really cool that that's obviously not as cool as the real Olympics, but I feel like doing that and watching like Marion Jones was my idol at the time before the drug situation. Um, and I just wanted to be like her so badly. And so I would do anything to, to be like her. Cause I was like, I'm going to do long jump like her and I'm going to be able to run the hundred. Um, but obviously my sport changed and I don't really know where I'm going with this answer. I, so no, I don't, I don't really have like a specific, specific moment. I just like love watching the Olympics. It's like so cool. I know. I, um, I have a couple, I think when I was like really little, um, we would like, my aunt had this like lake house in Maine and we would go in the summer. And for some reason it must've only happened like once or twice that it was actually the summer Olympics, but we always used to watch gymnastics while we were there. Mm -hmm. So I just like have these memories of like watching gymnastics on this tiny screen at the breakfast (laughs) counter with Christy. And we would just sit there and like watch these huge, like Olympic events for gymnastics. Um, I don't know like why that stuck in my mind, but I just remember thinking it was so cool and like fun to watch. And then I also remember watching, um, for soccer in 2008, when Carly scored against Brazil, Mm. I like, I think it was in the final. And I think that I was with my U 17 national team. Mm -hmm. And I think that we like watched it together. I like have a very vivid memory, but I also know that like, sometimes I make stuff up in my head. So I'm not positive that that's exactly what happened. Um, and I just remember like thinking, Oh my God, that's so sick. Like what she did was so sick. It was like, so cool. They won. Um, and now it's 13 years later and I'm on the team with Carly. Just saying that one that you're on the team with her, but 13 years later, then she's still going. Is... Yeah. Uh, Pat, Pat just came in the room to show me a chicken in a pan. Does it look what? good? Do you want to come show them? Does it look good? It looks good. It's uncooked, but it, it looks great. He's very proud. What flavors he on tie, there? He tied it up with twine because it's a whole chicken. I don't oh. know what flavors are on there, but he's gone now. So it was a well, good thank, interjection. Thank goodness he is cooking because remember you used to stick just plain chicken into the oven and expect it to pop out tasting delicious. I do remember that, um, but no more. <laughs> um, I was going to ask another question, but now, <laughs> oh, I wasn't a question at all. <laughs> I was just going to say sometimes... I've learned this about myself. Like, I don't think I remember a lot of things from my childhood. And then my sister will be like, do you remember this? And I'm like, oh yeah, that did happen. But like, I just don't, I like, I have childhood dementia or something. Yeah. I think that's so funny when like you, you, there's something that you never would have remembered if somebody hadn't brought it up to you, Yeah, but it exists in your mind still. Yeah. Does that happen to you? Yeah. But I don't know what that's called. Childhood dementia. (laughs) I just told you. Okay. Well, okay. maybe that is what it's called. Um, did, we get, want- did we get a fan question? I'm so sorry. We did. We did Wait. get a fan question. I can't see You want it. me to ask yeah. it to you? Where is it? Yes. Well, it is time for our fan question. Don't forget. Well, I guess this is also the last episode for right now. So... Oh, we'll do we want to talk later? Do you want to talk about the, uh, the... What are these things called? Episodes? The series? What, like, and what we've enjoyed about doing the podcast? Yeah. Sure. What have you enjoyed about doing the podcast? Oh, I've enjoyed a lot of things. I, one, think it's really cool that we're able to do this. I I love doing it with you. I love being able to just be myself and be silly, but also have real conversations. Um, I've enjoyed our guests. I think everybody has brought something very um, unique and inspiring. And, um, I'm so honored to have such cool friends and that I get to call each one of our guests a friend. Um, what else, what have you liked? I think it's really cool that we just get to come on here and babble. And we have this awesome team of people behind us who produce the show and make these cool social media videos and like have given us this platform to really just be ourselves and talk about what we want to talk about. So I just wanted to shout out to all of the people behind the scenes. They were on this yeah. Zoom call. There's a bunch of other people on here. They're all women. It's really awesome to get to work with all of them. 
Um, and like you said, I have just enjoyed getting to be myself and kind of put this out there into the world. And it seems like we've gotten some positive feedback. So I'm grateful that people want to listen. I love that. I, yes, the people behind the scenes, I don't think get enough credit. Um, they have helped us so much. I know that there's a lot of nonsense that we talk about. So for them to swift through that, sift, sift through that, exactly like this moment exactly. right now <laughs> and, and pick out the good stuff. Um, I'm sure it takes a really long time and they have been so patient with us as we've had like such a learning curve. And, um, I also, I was telling Sam that I read a comment that said, maybe we should stop saying like so much. Oh, I forgot. And maybe season two, I will try it out. No promises. Um, but what, well, maybe we'll try to stop saying like as much. Yes. I do think there are some things we could work on. Um, so at fans, listeners, let us know what you think, if we should do another bout of snacks. Um, and we will get back to you after the Olympics. Yeah. We got some business to take care of first. Um, yeah. Got to get focused. Samantha, big banana head, Mewis. There it is. <laughs> has got an Olympic games to win. Well, let's very quickly do this fan question and then we yes. will let these nice people go. Okay. Um, so from Sarah R best places to get coffee in carry and best restaurant. Oh, okay. So we always go to fount after we do a lift. So oh, the- yeah. We do. It's very cute. It's like an open situation with lots of um, plants. It's it's nice. We also go to Jubala a lot or Jubala, however you want to say it. But that's mm-hmm. in Raleigh. Yep. Um, where else? Um, I've been going to Iris, which is also in Raleigh. Iris, which is good. I think for restaurants, we go to Chopped a lot. We do go to Chopped a lot. Yeah. A um, lot. A lot, a lot. Where else do we go? Um, recently just found bench warmers, bagels, and that's my jam in the transfer food hall. Yep. Um, Dame's chicken and waffles. Yep. Hits. Is that an expression? It is now. Is Mat- it what it what are we what is the actual slaps? <laughs> Did I say hits? <laughs> yep. Is that a thing that people say? I, think I so, thought man. I was being cool saying it. And then it's like, it's not even a thing. Yeah. You aren't yeah. cool, <laughs> <laughs> but you're relatable. Remember that. That's, that's the brand. <laughs> that is the brand. <laughs> what else do we like? Mateo's, but that's not it. Oh any- yeah. I don't think I've ever been bar taco. Classic. Oh, bar taco. Bar taco. Hits. <laughs> hits somewhere but it hits and i guess that's it for the last episode of snacks season one thank I'm so you proud all of so us. much i'm so proud of us uh, thank you everybody for listening and tuning in and all the love that we have gotten um we see your signs at the games and we hear you guys yelling at us and it always brings a smile to our faces and i'm still shocked that people want to hear from us <laughs> Still so shocked. Me too. Well, if you guys want to do us a favor, make sure you've downloaded all six episodes. Um, And thank you all so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Our show is produced by Just Women Sports. For more great sports content, go to justwomensports.com. Be sure to subscribe to the newsletter and follow along on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm Sam Mewis. And I'm Lynn Williams. And you've been listening to Snacks. Sometimes to succeed, you can't do it alone. You need a team that understands your business on a personal level. Wiz takes a progressive approach to help you win. Think less calculators, more conversation. Wiz is a proud supporter of this podcast and the JWS community. To discover how Wiz is more than just an accounting firm, visit Wiz. That's W-I-S-S dot com slash JWS.